The other day, a aspiring Spike posted something on his Twitter talking about making a 2020 ancient Imperius R on turn two in modern. And that got me thinking, what could be better than a 2020 Trampler on turn two? What about a 2020 ancient Imperius R on turn two in modern, but on a hundred dollar budget? Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Seth Live, and it's time for another edition of Budget Magic. And this week, we're heading to Modern to try to make a 2020 Ancient Imperius R, maybe as early as turn two, with Dino Whack on a $100 budget. So let's talk about our deck, how we can maybe make a 2020 Trampler on turn two, jump into a Modern League, see it in action. So our key card card is Ancient Imperios R. Ancient Imperios R, a seven mana six six, but it has Convoke, and it has Tramble, and it has War two, and it ETBs with two plus one plus one counters for each creature that Convoked it. So what this means is if we can cast Ancient Imperios R purely by Convoke, it's gonna get 14 plus one plus one counters. So it's gonna be a 20, 20 Trampling War two creature in our deck with our best draws can do this as early as turn two. So how do we actually get an Ancient Imperios R? On the battlefield on turn two. And the way to think about this is convoke essentially means that every creature on the battlefield is making a mana. So our like random Memnites and Ornithopters, these free creatures are really free Birds of Paradises or Lana War Elves because they're making a mana for our Ancient Imperius are. So we start off with some just straight up free creatures. And then we have this Artifacts Act package of Voldaren Epicure, Chromatic Star, also Artifacts. And then Kadol Three Birth Gleeful Demolition can blow up an artifact to make three one ones. These cards are essentially Dark Rituals in our deck. If you think about it, Dark Ritual is one mana make three mana. Could all three birth is one mana, make three goblins. Those three goblins make mana for ancient Imperius are. So essentially we get to play eight dark rituals in modern, plus they're adding bodies to the battlefield as well. The final piece to the puzzle, Burning Tree Emissary in Chatterstorm. So Burning Tree, another free creature. Chatterstorm, with the help of like our free artifacts, can usually make like maybe three-ish squirrels, sometimes four for lucky, maybe two for unlucky. The main thing here is it Convoke cares about the colors of the creatures that's Convoking. Uh, ancient Imperius are we can have five creatures of whatever color for the generic mana, but then we need two green creatures for the green mana symbols if we actually want to make a 2020. So Burning Tree Emissary being green, Chatterstorm making green squirrels is actually super relevant to the plan of our deck. So let's say we make a bunch of tokens which are actually Birds of Paradises. We cast some Dark Rituals, which are actually Lethal Demolitions. We get the Ancient Imperius R on the battlefield. How do we win the game? Well, of course we can just pass the turn and untap the next turn and trample over for lethal. But when things go well, we can use a Reckless Bushwhacker or Goblin Bushwhacker to give the Dino a swing in for 21 trampling war damage right away. So that's the most spectacular kill. The Bushwhackers also key for a backup plan. One of the downsides of building around Ancient Imperius R is there's only one Ancient Ancient Imperios are. So if we don't happen to draw Imperios are, we don't have a 2020 Trampler, what are we gonna do? Well, our backup plan is we make a bunch of one ones and cast a bunch of free creatures and then just cast a Reckless Bushwhacker, Goblin Bushwhacker to pump them, hit for a ton of damage, hopefully close out the game that way. Mana base, pretty typical budget stuff. Shout out to some of the recent sets. Getting like Fastland reprint, the Painland reprint has been a really big deal for budget decks. We actually have three different untapped dual lands that we can play and still get in under the $100 budget. Sideboard, Artifact hate, some graveyard hate, some life gain, some mill hate, some combo hate, and that is Dino Wag for Modern. That's our budget magic deck for this week. So let's jump into a Modern League and see just how big we can make an Ancient Imperios are. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoy it, and I'll be back in a bit for the wrap up. Wanna try some dino whacking yourself? Well, you can get all the cards you need from our sponsor, Card Kingdom, over at cardkingdom.com slash mtggoldfish. Budget magic time. We are trying to make a huge ancient Imperios are playing some uh, di dino whack. We're dino dino whacking. Spire Bluff Canal. I mean, the question's going to be does our opponent have counters? Okay, turn one. Memnite could all three birth. Oh, Bushwhacker. Okay, turn one. Memnite could all three birth. Turn two. Ornithopter Chatterstorm. That's three, four, five. Or do we wait? This is a weird hand. Well, Pike our pools in forest. One, two, three, four, five, six. If we wait, though, we can't get all three birth and Chatterstorm in the same turn. Wait, what if we we wait? Ornithopter, Ornithopter, Chatterstorm. Then the next turn, could all three birth 
Imperio. Okay, we're we're gonna pass. We're gonna pass. We might be able to turn three hasty Imperios. Or I mean, the question is gonna be: Does our blue playing opponent have counter spells? That's always always a fun question. The counter check opponent scolding darn passes. Oh, Carpoolson Forest. Okay, play play Carpoolson Forest. Let's let's think this through. Ornithopter, Memnite, could all chatter a storm. Three, four, five. Then the next turn, could all three birth a dork. Five down to four, up to seven. Imperius are bushwhacker. Okay, I mean we gotta go for it. So Ornithopter. Storm count it one. Memnite. Storm count it two. Chatterstorm. Squirrels times three. Ancient Imperius are should be uncounterable. Chatter and also chatter. Your go opponent untaps in pyroclasms. <laughs> Anger of the gods. Opponent gonna crack the scalding tarn. Steam vents tapped. I mean, in our perfect world, our opponent just taps out for something and we win. Considers okay. Oh, come on, no counter, no counter. Burning tree emissary. Play the mountain. Play the burning tree emissary. Kodolfa Rebirth, Ornithopter, about it. Are they countering this? Well, we will pay for the spell pierce. Imperiosar. So we don't get a hasty Imperiosar, but uh, unclear how our opponent beats a 2020 here. Uh, yeah, how about a 2020 Ward 2? So the spell pierce kept us from bushwhacking to just immediately kill our opponent. On the other hand, there's not enough unholy heats in the world to take down an ancient Imperiosar. But it needs some sort of like bounce spell, I guess. And even then they gotta pay the ward two. Wait, is this gonna work? Are we just gonna get him? Ah, put us gifted up. Not quite as explosive as possible, but that was a, that was a pretty good win through a, a bit of interaction from our opponent. So opponent's playing is it? I don't know if we change anything, honestly. It's probably Murktide. We could like, Tormod's Crypt? Weather the Storm? Let's just run it back and do that again. All right, 2020 on turn three. Wid Trample and Ward two through Spell Fears. Not bad for 100 bucks. I mean, we are in the draw. We're gonna try it. We have the Chromatic Star, which can redraw. Play a Mountain, play Chromatic Star. So next turn, Ornithopter, ugh, assuming we hit a land. Ornithopter, Memnite, Burning Tree, Chatterstorm. It's a lot of bodies. We do need to draw land though for any of this to matter. Voldaren Epicure. Sac Chromatic Star. Red. Draw a card. Ornithopter. Memnite. Play the land. Oh, the question is do we try to Burning Tree? The problem is if they counter Burning Tree, then we kind of just did nothing this turn, which is awkward. Chatterstorm guarantees us bodies. They probably are going to counter it. You can't play this deck afraid, I don't think. Burning Tree. Oh, resolves. Okay. Chatterstorm. Yes, one, two. That's, that's seven bodies. That's seven. I mean, we're going to go for it. Maybe they're waiting to counter the dino. Oh no! They actually have the counter? Aww, blue decks. Blue decks! Oh, we were on the draw too. If we were on the play, that would have got down before our opponent could counter it. Well, we still got a bunch of bodies. Let's see if our opponent has a sweeper of some kind. If they do, then we're pretty much dead. Like we, yep. So we shot our shot, we did our thing, and our opponent had the counter spell into the sweeper. So now it's gonna be very difficult for us to win this game, I think. Our best bet's to draw an untapped red source here. Voldaren Epicure. So we did the thing, our opponent just had like exactly the exactly the right combination of answers. And they needed both. Our opponent did need both, I think, or else our random dorks probably would have got there. They needed the counter spell plus the sweeper. Unfortunately, they had the counter spell plus the sweeper. So now, now we're getting to the late game. And one of the downsides of uh, trying to put Ancient Imperial Source into play, no Goblin Grenades, no Lightning Bolt. So there's no reach. So we do need to somehow deal 14 damage only with creatures which I mean still though we put our opponent to the test they passed the test unfortunately but that was still pretty impressive like like I said if we were on the play there that dino comes down before our opponent could counter a spell and then our opponent's just done Merc died, Regent. I don't think there's a way we can win from here. Like, no matter what we do, our opponent just had the right answers chromatic star crack chromatic star at a mana <laughs> discard the chatter storm burning tree well we'll play it out for another turn oh that was a disappointing one because our deck did its thing our opponent just had the right answers i mean the other thing is most decks are not blue decks that will have access to a counter spell opponent considers goes to combat attacks for seven down to 13. we draw gleeful demolition uh, it would have been nice if we could have Gleeful Demolition. Are they just going to snap counter this? Subtlety. All right. 
the good news is we're on the play for game number three. And what that means is if we have that same exact draw, it's going to come down before our opponent can counter a spell. Unfortunately, we saw that our opponent is overloaded with uh, with answers, counters, sweepers, a lot of stuff that's good against what we're doing. So can we pick up this win? We need a really good hand. We need the we need the turn two hand. We need the same hand we had last game, but being on the play instead of the draw. If we get that same hand, I think we win. I guess our opponent could have spell pierce to fizzle it, but we get to play first. I mean, we got no dino, but we got a bushwhacker. I think we just go for the go for the fair plan here. Mem Knight could all three birth. Sack Mem Knight. Next turn, worst case, Burning Tree Reckless Bushwhacker. Hit you for a bunch and then see what happens. Best case is probably drawing another Burning Tree, actually. Or even like a Mem Knight or Ornithopter would be fine. And passes. A Voldaren Epic Yaw. Play Carpusen Forest. Play a Burning Tree Emissary. Make a little mana. And then Surge Bushwhacker. We should be able to get in a pretty huge attack here. We'll see what our opponent's follow up is. So we hit our opponent for 11 on turn two. No dino, down to nine. Well, let's see what interaction they have. That is a fast start though. Polluted Delta. They really need the engineered explosives, I guess, just to do something. Okay, there's the engineered explosive, so that can kill the one ones. Does not kill these though. So we still hit our opponent for a lot. Cracks the explosives. Can we close it out? We don't have burn, remember, there's no burn. We're playing dinos instead of bird. Oh, not the best time for a dino. Down to four. Voldaire and Epicure. Down to three. I'm tempted to just discard the dino and see what we draw, but I guess there's no point in doing it now. Well, I guess we know if we play the land. All right, let's just pass. Let's pass. I mean, Pony again needs answers. They are again staring down death on the battlefield. Spire Bluff Canal. Oh no, if this was, if this was a burn spell, be winning. As it is though, this Pyromancer just cleans up. So I guess we just pass and leave the blood token. If we draw a Kadolth Rebirth or Gleeful Demolition. Whoa! I mean, I don't even know. I don't even know what to, what to say about that one. Discard the dino, draw burning tree. I mean, this one is just over now, though. There's no reach. There's no reach. That is the cost. Wow. You know what the funny thing is? If our opponent did not also have the fury, they would be dead here. There's no way we can win from here, so we're going to scoop it up. We didn't win, unfortunately, against the, the dominant best deck in the modern format. But our opponent had to have Engineered Explosives on turn two into Season Pyromancer into Fury. All of that in the first three turns of the game. They had it, so we lose. But boy, they needed a lot of very specific things to actually overcome this. If they were missing any one of those pieces, they lose. Like, if they did not have all three of those... In their starting hand then it's just then we win so on one hand it's a little unfortunate on the other hand what do you do budget magic time we are oh mulliganing trying to make it ancient imperius are super early in the game well i mean this we're gonna keep what do we put to the bottom all right gleeful demolition to the bottom so turn one could all three birth turn two dork bushwhacker Hope for the best. We draw another land. Well, play the land. Play an Ornithopter. Could also rebirth the Ornithopter. Opponent, I swear to God, if you fury us, I am going to be furious. Opponent, Arid Mesa cracks it. Obnoxious. I mean, we do get to kill it. Opponent gets back a land. Oh, okay, we need to we need to stop drawing lands. That would be ideal. Play a Memnite. Surge of Bushwhacker, hope for the best. Yeah, we do have to send four damage at the Ren, unfortunately, because otherwise, otherwise it's just going to snipe our creatures one by one. Well, kill the Ren, hit you to 10, pass the turn. No more lands, no more lands, and no Furies. Passing. Go to combat, attack you. Leyline Binding, I mean, that's sort of okay. That does up our storm count for Chatterstorm. Down to six. Well, Chatterstorm, two squirrels. Call her Poussin Forest. Go. Can we close it out? Oh my goodness, it's so close. Opponent. Arid Mesa. Cracks it to five. Oh no. Creativity. Back up to eight. Oh my god, we drew the Bushwhacker though. That lets us steal it. A little bit of luck for the good guys. Okay, kick them. 
Oh, and we got there somehow through the Archon of Cruelty. No dinos, no dinos, but we uh, we did whack them. Do we even change anything? Can we even change anything? Tormod script? No. Haywire might? No. Pithing Needle? Can try to name Fetchlands, I guess. Void Mirror? Also no. 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 I mean, it worked that time. We got there that time. And we didn't even have the Dino. I mean, we got super lucky to top deck that whack. That was like our one turn to draw exactly Goblin Bushwhacker. Sand's a little sketchy because we don't have any... Any big payoffs? No, no wax, no dinos. Now let's just Copperline Gorge, Voldaren Epicure. Boy, drawing the dino would be sweet. That would be sweet. With what we have in hand, next turn we could Burning Tree, Memnite, Memnite, Chatterstorm, cast a dino, and probably win. All right, opponent passes, and Imperiosar off the, t oh my God, it is Imperiosar. Okay, I mean, we're definitely going for it. Carpools in Forest, Memnite. Well, we'll see if they got counters. Also Memnite, Burning Tree, Emissary, Chatterstorm, this is a pretty good turn too. Not bad. There's one more piece to the puzzle though. There's one final piece. Six, seven. 2020, hit ya. Can you stop the dino? That's a turn two 2020 on a hundred dollar budget. <laughs> Okay, opponent, bolts a burning tree, sure. I mean, they gotta kill the dino though. If they have untapped land into ley line binding, they can kill the dino and pay the ward. Cracks the fetch. Well, let's draw a whack, that would be sweet. This does tap our opponent out. Yep. Opponent passes, we draw. Kadaltha Rebirth, we'll go to combat. Hit you with everything. Kadaltha Rebirth, sack the blood token. Could all the rebirth sack the Memnite, and I think we can win through an Archon here. We can't win through another through a sweeper. Our opponent answered the Dino. I mean, we made the 2020 on turn two. That was pretty sweet. And the, the Imperials are, I mean, boy, the explosive starts are sweet. We haven't actually seen it kill someone, but it does get the deck off to some explosive starts. Budget magic time. We are doing some dino whacking in modern this week. See how quickly we can get an ancient Imperios are on the battlefield. Oh, this hand is interesting. So there's no dino. We make a lot of, I mean, I guess we keep it. This hand is like a dino away from being really sweet. Opponent blood crypt untapped and Ragavan. We're going to have blockers. Assuming our opponent doesn't, doesn't have a fury. Well, there's an Imperiosaur. Carpulsin forest and Memnite and also Kodaltha rebirth. If we didn't have to block, we could actually Imperiosaur. Okay. MH2! No, oh, well, GG. Okay, well, I take it all back. We're dead. Opponent gets in with the stupidest of monkeys, steals a Kadal 3 birth, makes a treasure token, and plays a Blood Crypt untapped down to 16. Kadal 3 bursts. Ragavan. It's a broken card. We will play a Mountain. We will play a Burning Tree Emissary. Yeah, well, we're getting MH2'd out of this one, unfortunately. We'll play a Chromatic Star. We'll Gleeful Demolition the Chromatic Star. Oh, we had a sweet hand, too. We had a sweet hand, but in the end, I don't think any of it really matters. We'll see. So I guess we can block the Ragavan and play a somewhat but not that big Imperiosar. So block Ragavan, take a few million. Oh, we can't even play. We need to draw another free creature to play Imperiosar. All right, so we dropped a five Pone at Vernon Catacombs. Fable of the Mia Brega. Well, <sighs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Those were all legal magic, the gathering plays. I guess we run it back. Can we not play against Furies for once in our lives? Fury has been the bane of our existence. Uh, would have been a good dino hand if our opponent did not have the, the turn one. I mean, what? Turn one Ragavan into Fury to Wrath away three creatures, into Ragavan, steal something, cast it, make a bunch of creatures. What a world. Do we even keep this hand? Oh, there's no dinos. There was no wax. So it's turn one Epicure, turn two Gleeful Demo. Demolition, I guess. Make a bunch of bodies that don't do anything. Yeah, I think we mulligan. All right, that's a that's a zero lander. We will not keep the zero lander. All right, well, we're kind of back to where we started, except with no cards in hand. Gleeful demolition to the bottom. 
chromatic star, I guess, to the bottom. Not feeling great. Well, one way to play around scam is just to empty your own hand so then they have nothing to grief. Ha ha, got him. Unfortunately, we have the wrong bushwhacker too that can't actually come down off of burning tree mana. Blood grip tapped. Passes. We will get in for three and pass the turn. Yeah, Moldifives are tough. Being short of mana here is definitely uh, an issue. All right, there's the Fury, and we will scoop it up. Quick and easy, just how we like it. We would prefer quick and easy with us winning, but eh, what can you do? Budget magic time. We are on the draw again. I mean, we're going to keep. Boy, we've been on the draw every every single game. Opponent, Ragavan. Well, we do have blockers. Boy, you really need a land. A land would be spectacular. So we will Ornithopter. Gleeful Demolition, the Ornithopter. Make some Ragavan blockers. Like, oh, if we can if we can hit one land, Burning Tree Chatterstorm, that gets us close to Imperius, our faceless haven for our opponent goes to combat. We draw land. Oh my God, another Burning Tree, okay. Oh, we're one land away. We're one land away from, from glory. Opponent. Stomps on a goblin. Mm -hmm. Are we going to get punished for attacking? All right, Vonit has managed to get in the Ragavan hit. Steals a land that we needed. Ancient Imperios or Okay, well, not a land we needed. All right, there's a land. So we get to, let's see. So we get to Burning Tree. Into Burning Tree. We're still a creature short, aren't we? So Chatterstorm makes three. Well, Chatterstorm. Go to combat. Double removal spells for our opponent. Kept the Imperius are off the table for now. Opponent untaps. This feels like the kind of deck that would be playing Fury. Boros Reckoner. Opponent going to pass. Is this game Memnite Imperiosaur as a 2020? Kick a Bushwhacker. Go to combat. Four toughness. Opponent's at 18. Opponent blocks. Wait, does this put our opponent to one? Oh no, it's good, it's good. That's 18, that's a dino win. That's what we wanted. See, it is possible. It is possible to get the dino win on a $100 budget. Boros Reckoner though, I'm kind of frightened about what our opponent's doing. That Memnite off the top was clutch because it actually let us haste in the Imperiosar. Run them back, try to do that again. We can Epicure Gleeful Demolition. We just have way too many Kidalth Rebirths at the moment. Yeah, let's, let's mulligan once. Not a great hand though. We'll put an Ornithopter to the bottom. Mountain for our opponent. Well, Carpools and Forest. Yeah, I think we just Voldaire and Epicure. We don't really care about getting Blood Moon. We do care about all the Red Sweepers. Boros Reckoner is actually kind of an issue if we don't have if we don't have the Dino. Mountain. I eat a lot of the Great Rebels. That's gonna hurt. Well, I mean, I guess we just play our cards. Oh, we can't burn any tree bushwhack, can we? Oh, this Eidolon's going to wreck our face. So I guess we play an Ornithopter. Ouch, take two. Kick a bushwhacker. Ouch. Take two more. And go attacking. Opponent out of 14. Opponent passes. We draw a mountain. Well, blood token. Discard the mountain. Play Carpoosin Forest. Stomps. A bushwhacker. Sure. So it seems like our opponent kept this hand almost solely based on this Eidolon. Wow, getting frisky. Down to 12. This is going to be close. This Eidolon is really hurting. Play Epicure. Get panged. Double ouch, mana base pain, burning tree emissary. Down to six, make some mana. Chatterstorm down to four. Well, this is what we got. We got a bunch of squirrels. And we're at four, which is not a ton of life. Down to 10. Opponent bolts our face. All right, so opponent apparently our opponent just has a lethal amount of burn here. Opponent untaps, plays a land. Season Py wait a minute, maybe they don't have a lethal amount of burn. Season Pyromancer, but they get to make a bunch of blockers. Wow, Chandra and Koth, okay. Opponent passes, we can't cast spells. So if we swing with everything, we lose. Discard Chromatic Star. One, two, three, four. Well, go to combat, get in with Burning Tree. Going to block with the Eidolon. Well, play the land past the turn. We are dead to a a light breeze at the moment. Opponent mountain number four and draws a burn spell. Well, there's good news, which is we are on the play for game number three. And if we get a good draw on the play, we should be in good shape. That was a bad draw on the draw. Come on deck, show us the power of the dino. All right, we will definitely play first. I'm pretty sure we've lost every die roll this league, every single one. We really need a Kadaltha rebirth. Carpoolson Forest, Chromatic Star. If we can draw a, 
All right, there's the silly Ragavan. The bonus passes. Get all three birth. Gleeful demolition. That that kind of counts. So we gleeful demolition and pass. The other option is what? Memnite Chatterstorm. Let's play the mountain. Gleeful demolition. Draw a card. All right, opponent. <laughs> Don't fury us, bro. No attacks. Well, okay, here goes. Oh, that's a good draw. We play a mountain. We make some mana. We play Memnite. Opponent's going to stomp, sure. There's an issue though, opponent. There's problems. There's problems with your plan. Chatterstorm, make some squirrels. Imperiosaur, make a 2020. Hit you for one. I don't know how a red deck beats this. Like, how does a red deck beat a 2020 Trample Ward 2? I don't think it's possible. Is that Dino Game? <laughs> Photos goops it up. When it works, it is pretty spectacular. Wow, we were actually like almost close to bushwhacking it too. When it works, it's pretty spectacular. When it doesn't work, we get furied and cry, but <laughs> Dino, Dino time. Sweet, sweet. Budget magic time. We are playing some Dino Whack in modern, seeing if we can make a huge ancient Imperius R. We don't have any free spells. We might have to spend turn two cracking a blood token, which feels horrible. Yeah, we're gonna mulligan actually. Kadaltha rebirth to the bottom. Well, Carpus and Forest. Yeah, I guess we just run the bodies out there. Oh, we do need something for this. You know what? We're gonna play this slightly slow. We're gonna run out the Chromatic Star past the turn. Next turn, we can Kadaltha rebirth the Chromatic Star and Greg and Rage Channeler. Oh, we're never killing that. Opponent passes. Play the Mountain. Gleeful Demolition Chromatic Star. Make some one ones. Draw a card. I think we pass. Next turn we can Memnite Bushwhacker. If we draw land, we can Memnite Gleeful Demolition Bushwhacker. Oh, oh boy, that's a lot of Dragon Rage Channelers. That is scary. And a Swift Spia. All right, oh no, oh no, oh no. Gonna leave the card on top. Pony is down to two cards in hand, technically. Cracks the bobble, takes a peek, draws a card, next turn. Wow, doesn't get in, okay, okay, sure. Well, Pony gets to draw. Well, let's see what we draw. Well, I mean, I guess we play Burning Tree. Would have been nice to hit a land, actually. Play Burning Tree. Make a little mana. Memnite. Surge a Bushwhacker. And do some attacking. Here comes the dorks. A free spell here for our opponent would be a blue wow. Our hand is dead-ish at the moment. Okay, okay. Well, we hit our opponent for a bunch, and we kind of clear the board. That's actually not the worst. Could really use an artifact to uh, do some more rebirthing. Opponent plays a mountain and okay. Oh my God. That's what we're doing over there. Okay, sure. Now we draw the land, play the land past the turn. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, rhinos, bigger than goblins. This is a weird build. Goes attacking, leaves back the rhinos. I mean, I think our only realistic chance is to get down a dino. Passes. Well, Voldaren Epicure. Kadaltha Rebirth, Sack the Blood. Pass the Tur. Could a whack do it? Maybe. Depends on what our opponent draws. Bonnet taking up the Asphodel. Mishra's Bobble. Our best draw is still a, a dino. In 1818, might get the job done. We are kind of running out of time, unfortunately. Opponent looking at the top. Well, maybe we have something good on top of our deck. Our opponent really paused. Maybe it's a dino. Could also be a bushwhacker. Or maybe our opponent is just, <laughs> I don't know, checking the other monitor. And, <laughs> and we're overthinking this by a ton. Opponent leaving back the rhinos. I, I think there's something good on top of our deck. Now we'll see, opponent gets to draw. Oh, it is an Imperiosar. All right, well, I mean one. There it is. 1818. Can it steal us this win? Opponent untaps, takes up the as foretold. Come on, Dino. Come on, Dino. Show those rhinos what's up. Scoops it up. Yes. Okay. Triple one drop into rhinos and then Dino steals. All right. Opponent's playing a weird rhino build. Probably bring in the Void Mirror. That does stop Rhinos. We only got one of them, but our best bet is still just to make a huge Dino super quick and smack them. Do we want Haywire Mites? Haywire Mites can get rid of As Foretold. Although maybe our best bet is just kill our opponent before As Foretold matters. I guess we could like, all right, let's, we could go down Epicures. Maybe we try Haywire Mites over Epicures. They can still Convoke. 
try it like that. The dino came through. Oh, this deck's really interesting. On one hand, the dino does add a new line of attack, which does just beat decks. Like, that game, we weren't going to win without the dino. Those rhinos were going to shut down our random 1-1s. One we weren't going to get through that damage. There are games that Imperius are wins that an 8-whack deck would not otherwise be able to win. On the other hand, it does come with a cost. We need to play lots of creatures and artifacts, which means we don't really get any removal or bird. So there is a cost there. We've also seen the downside of Ancient Imperius are, which there's times where our opponent just like, we make a bunch of 1-1s one and the turn before we can Imperius are, our opponent just like furies away our board or whatever. Oh, we need to cut one more card, don't we? There we go. We are on the draw for game number two against, well, we are on the mulligan. Wax for days, but literally nothing else. Yes, and kind of horrible. Yes, we will mulligan. Technically, we have an Imperios R. The sand's still pretty sketchy. We are gonna need to draw some uh, bodies to get down this dino. Opponent, Mountain, Soul Scar Mage. Burning Tree Emissary. Well, uh, Carpoosin Forest Go. Free Spell next turn would be sweet. That would be the best. If we can draw a free spell in like Burning Tree Free Spell Chatterstorm, that's a, that's a lot of bodies. That is a lot of bodies. Steam Vents for opponent, untap down to 17. And Sprite Dragon, Clock Increase It, down to 18. Passes. Bushwhacker. Surge Bushwhacker. Hit you for five, down to 12. Well, let's see if they got as foretold rhinos. Opponent, ooh, here comes the triggers. Mishra's bobble, uh-huh, grows the dorks. Yeah, we don't have a way to stop, we just have to win. Like, we don't have a way to stop the sprite dragon. Opponent takes a peek at their own deck this time, trying to see if they want to shuffle with a fetch maybe. Oh, it's gonna be close. No attacks, interesting. Do we just play a Void Mirror? Our other option is what? Bushwhack Shatterstorm? That feels pretty bad. All right, play Carpoosin Forest. Play Void Mirror. Shut down them rhinos. Pass the turn. I don't think we can attack this turn. Too easy to get blown out by like any lightning bolt consider, like name a spell and we just lose our board. Opponent, Scalding Tart. I mean, as foretold doesn't do anything with a Void Mirror out, which is good. Okay, oh boy, well, this is not good. Kills our dork, grows the stuff. Yeah, that's a lot of damage, that's a lot of damage. Opponent passes. Ornithopter, that's actually kind of awkward with this void mirror, but Ornithopter, get it countered. Bushwhacker, no kicker, down to nine, and then, yeah, I mean, we will cast a Chatterstorm, get some copies. All right, three squirrels. I mean, we can play a dino next turn. Not a full dino, but a, a decent dino. Another Soulscar Mage. Hits us with the Sprite Dragon. Well, I think it's dino time. We draw. Chromatic Star. The question is, how many creatures do we need to leave untapped? Seven. Do we survive to get in the attack? This is the entire game. Do we survive this turn? The dino closes it out with a single swing here if we get to untap. Lava Dart doesn't deal damage, gets countered. Lightning Bolts and Spite Dragons, though, that could get us. This would also actually give us a winning record. Land, okay. Praxa, are we dead? As foretold, that doesn't really matter, though, right? It triggers Prowess. Oh, I guess Lightning Bolt does do it, doesn't it? Lava Dart. Wait, can they? They need another free spell. Lava Dart. Countered, but still triggers prowess. Oh no, this works. We're at seven. Wow. Oh, they found the way. Okay. Yeah, they did it. That that Sprite Dragon. One more Lava Dart. It gets countered, but it doesn't matter. Oh no. I can't believe they got there. Maybe we gotta try Weather the Storm. Go down like, oh, we want the fast start though. Go down one Bushwhacker, bring in two Weather the Storms, one Haywire Might Down, try it like that. All right, we're on the play. Can we close it out with a 3-2? Can we get the winning record? Oh, I thought we were gonna get there. That's Sprite Dragon, we can't kill it. See if Weather the Storm saves us. The life gain does seem relevant. Although in a perfect world, if we can just like turn two Imperios R, I mean, I guess that's the upside. We have draws that we can get that just literally beat anyone. Can we get them? Nah, that's another question. There's only one Imperios R. It's not like there's a, a super good backup. We got the Kadal three birth, but we gotta wait until turn two. Pathway and Chromatic Star, go. Passes. Shatterstorm. Well, let's Kadal three birth the uh, Chromatic Star. Wow, opponent. Spell pierces. Yeah, that's not great. 
play the mountain, play a haywire might pass the turn. Not feeling good, not feeling good. That spell pierce is, is really, really bad for us. Monastery Swift Spear goes attacking. Wow, passes. Feeling a little bit better now. Land on green. Surge of Bushwhacker. Opponent down to 11. Do they draw land? Oh my goodness, they do. Opponent off the top. Another Swift Spear and another Swift Spear. They better not have a free spell. Well, okay, Ornithopter. Kick a Bushwhacker. Go to combat, swing with everything. If they can grow the Swift Spears, we get so blown out here. Like we, we pretty much just lose. I mean, they can block and kill a bunch of stuff. They have a spell. Oh no. Whoa! Opponent has a mutagenic growth, grows their team. Opponent goes to five, but we lose our board and our opponent still has a million Monastery Swift Spears. There's no reach. Remember, there's no reach in this deck. Opponent plays a Dragon's Claw to try to start gaining life and also grow their Swift Spears. All that mutagenic growth was a blue out. Draw a card. Play a Chatterstorm, make a couple squirrels. Get in with a Bushwhacker. Well, opponent gets to start gaining life. We draw. Well, I guess we just pass. Uh, these are the points where I'm really missing a Goblin Grenade. Lightning Bolts are Ornithopter. Gains a life, grows the Swift Spears. I mean, basically we need to find an Imperiosaur. And Lava Dart gains a life, grows the Swift Spears. Nah, not looking great. I mean, keeping the bodies off the board also makes it difficult for us to ever resolve an Imperiosar down to 50. Opponent passes. Well, go to combat, hit you with the squirrel. Ornithopter, Memnite, Chatterstorm, make some squirrels. Pass the turn. Another Dragon's Claw. Dino off the top, Magic Gods. Burning Tree Emissary. All right, so we will pass the turn. Oh, where's the Imperiosar? Gonna gain a bunch of life. Dragon Rage Channeler, back up to eight. Our work is being undone by these double Dragon Claws. Does a Whack even do it anymore? I don't think so, because they can Lava Dart. A bonus passes. Carpoosin Forest, we will play it. We will pass the turn. As a lightning bolt, cast it main phase, interesting. All right, gains a bunch of life. I mean, we're running out of time. I'm a little disappointed our opponent got paid off for uh, keeping that one land spell pierce hand. They kept one land spell pierce and then, and then drew the second land. If they had not drawn that second land, they would have been, ooh, so dead opponent. I mean, we have like, what, one turn to draw Imperiosar, I think. As for told, yeah, one turn. Can we draw it? That is that is a whole game. The whole game in a single turn. Opponent. I don't know about our opponent's uh, deck. I don't know about this as for told to cast Rhino's plan. One time, Ancient Imperios are just once. Weather the storm. We pass the turn. Weather the storm is interesting. If our opponent actually tries to kill us and cast a bunch of spells, it might save us. We could also draw a dino someday. That would be sweet. Lava Dart. Ooh, opponent's gonna go for it. This is interesting. Gains a bunch of life, triggers all their stuff, kills our Meb Knight. Yep. Lava Dart, gonna kill a squirrel. I mean, this Weather of the Storm's gonna do a bit of work though. We are losing bodies though that we kinda wanted. I mean, I assume at this point our opponent keeps going, right? Like, attacks, attacks. Yeah, let's block one. We can still play a Dino, thanks to, to Burning Tree. We drop to nine for now. And now we will Weather the Storm. Go back up to 18. Okay, we can pay for a spell pierce. Opponent is out of cards. So this would be our turn to draw something. Opponent leaves a card on top. Prowess, prowess. Well, we will pay. Come on, deck. Come on, deck. How about a dino? How about a dino? Actually, a whack here would be fine too. So back up to 18. Hit you with the squirrels. Back down to 11. Play the mountain past the turn. I mean, what would they leave on top? Rhinos to go with their silly as foretold? Oh no! Expressive iteration to go with their silly as foretold. That is not what we wanted to see. Not even a little. Well, I mean, in some ways, I guess we're just running a little poorly. We've we've managed to go 19 cards deep in one of the longest eight whack games of all time and just cannot find a dino. And then these double dragon claws for our opponent has done an absurd amount of work. The opponent takes a bobble, plays a bobble, turns on the dragon rage channeler, triggers, triggers, grows their dorks. Yeah, we're taking a lot of damage here. Leaves it on top, oh no. 
opponent cracks the bobble, takes a peek, sees, well, that was pretty quick. I'm guessing a land, unfortunately. Lava darts, one of our squirrels. All right, well, opponent has, for now, once again, used most of their resources. Okay, this time they surveil away the Dragon Rage Channeler. Oh, that's when they found off of, off of the expressive iteration. Okay, so I think this might mean that there's a dino on top. We'll see. Our opponent taking down both squirrels seems like something they would do if there was a dino on the top of their of our deck. So we take it. Opponent gets to draw a card. Well, I think we're still dead, though. We're definitely dead. Oh, it's just too late. Oh... We needed it a turn earlier. We needed it a turn earlier. I will say that was that was interesting. I don't know. I'm honestly not sure if this is better than a traditional AWAC deck. Actually, I think I'm not sure that I think it is. I think it might be worse. The upside is the upside of playing Dino Wack is you get free wins. And I do love free wins. Uh, and there are times when we just Ancient Imperials are and it just straight up wins the game. We got to see that. So our record, we won two, lost three. Although honestly, two of the losses were like super, super close. And then the wins were pretty like face rolly. So the record was okay. I, I would have liked to get that last win. The upside of playing Ancient Imperials are is you do get some free wins, which is nice. Like you do just sometimes get a turn two 2020 trample and it just straight up wins the game. The downside of Ancient Imperios are in playing uh, this style of 8 whack deck is you lose reach, which we got to see a few times if we had had a Goblin Grenade or if we had had a, a Lightning Bolt even that re really would have changed things. We could have removed a creature if we had to, like that Sprite Dragon that killed us. We could have just killed our opponent sometimes by throwing it at our opponent's face. So the cost of losing the burn spells in the reach, part of the power of uh, more traditional builds of 8-whack is you hit your opponent for like 10 damage with creatures or 12 damage with creatures and then Goblin Grenade and uh, grenades and bolts just finish the game really efficiently. That's something that this build is is definitely missing. There's there's not really any reach to close out the game. The other thing we ran into is just consistency, I guess. Like uh, without the reach and without any removal, we're really all in on Ancient Imperios R. And when it works, it is spectacular and awesome and. I absolutely love it. When it doesn't work, we kind of do nothing. We saw like the two games against Fury. Oh my God, what a what a ridiculous blowout where we just like try to do our thing and our opponent furies away our board and we just kind of can't do anything from that point on. So there, I don't know, there's upsides and downsides, but very curious to see what y'all think. Like, I think the deck's really fun. I could certainly see this deck five owing a league. Like it's a little casino-y. It's a little casino-y. If you high roll and you dodge the furies and you get a lot of like turn to Imperius our hands, you could easily go 5-0 in this deck. No doubt about it. Uh, no questions asked. On the other hand, the deck also has some pretty tough matchups. And we got to see in that last game in specific, like the deck's not very great at closing out the game without Imperius are like it's it's kind of a little a little sketch when it comes to closing out the game. And it has a lot of a lot of weak draws like Chatterstorm, one of the best ways to the only way really uh, only reasonable way to have like a turn two ancient imperius are. i guess you have like three burning trees or something along with some ornithopters and mem knights but in, in reality chatter storm is a card that lets turn to imperius are be a thing but then it's also like pretty bad off the top if we don't have imperius are and we've already dumped our hand it's it's pretty below the curve so definitely a super high risk high reward style of eight whack cool see ancient imperius are doing its thing whether or not it's actually better than the the more traditional goblin plan of eight whack that's what we gotta wait and see but nah you can definitely see some upside sides in downsides to uh to going this direction but anyway that is dino whack that's been our budget magic for this week let me know what y'all think like <sighs> you've seen eight whack in the past it's a classic budget budget archetype does the dinosaur make it better is this the future of eight whack in modern budget eight whack in modern or do you think the more traditional like goblin centric goblin aggro eight whack build will will be the main way to go is there any way of mashing them together that's the other thing we didn't really get into like because ancient imperial needs so many creatures there's really not room to play those burn 
Bone spells. I, I don't think there's a way you can do everything because if you start playing uh, Lightning Bolts, then that's a creature that you're cutting or an artifact that turns into a creature that you're cutting, which weakens Imperius are. So I don't know if there's a I don't know if there's a way to play like a, a middle of the road version of this deck where you can kind of like play a fair game of magic, but also Imperius are. I don't know if there's a way to actually make that style work. But if you got ideas for it, I'd love to hear it because I love 8-Wack. I love Agent of Furious R. We got some awesome wins. We also got some spectacular blowouts, but that is Dino Wack. That's been our budget magic for this week. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will talk to you soon.